That's a bit of a long story how it came about. It started life in 1973 when Harry Matthews, who founded the museum, had had a heart attack. His doctor told him to go for a little walk each day and on one of his little walks he found sitting in a dustbin an old echo radio that he'd helped to design. So it went home and that was his recuperation. So he mended that and when it was better and he was better, went back to work, which was Edinburgh University, took it with him, showed it to the boys in the radio lab and said, look, I've done this. By the end of the week he had two. Then he had a table full, then two tables, then curtains around the tables and stuff underneath. And that was in 1973. So we're now in 2016 and those two tables have now grown into something like 40 tonnes. As I say, sometimes small town museums aren't particularly interesting, but this one has got lots of fascinating equipment in it. But actually, I think most people would be interested to know how different sorts of technology were used in past years and how some of them succeeded and some of them failed. Uh, my role is largely technical. Uh, I, uh, I like to fix things. I don't like a lot of broken things that don't work. And uh, I've found enough material in here to build a small TV studio, two camera studio, and uh, we've managed to use it with some scout groups. They've, we've set them some interview exercises and they've learned quite a lot from that. Uh, we're quite keen in youngsters with, uh, that are on the Duke of Edmunds Award scheme to maybe help us out as guides. We are open on Wednesdays and also Saturdays, which would be ideal for them to come along. But apart from dealing with all the, the official business, I'm also a volunteer guide. I help make the tea. I go out to schools and do road shows for school groups, whether it be primary or secondary. And I have given the odd lecture as well about the museum. Primary school children in particular really enjoy it because they see things and they handle things they've never seen or touched before. And when they do, if they do come to the museum, they'll find that there's lots of hands-on experience for them. Our founder, Harry Matthews, was really interested in encouraging youngsters. So we have telephones, we have semaphore flags, oldest lamps, and so on, Morse keys that they can play with so that when they come here they have a fun experience rather than perhaps a dry experience as you might think with the name Museum of Communication. It's not, it's not just looking at things, you actually get to try them and see how they work properly. I help set up the exhibitions and also act as guide. Over here this huge thing was fitted to a Lancaster bomber. It does exactly the same thing, uh, but obviously was far easier to maintain and to, well, to produce in the first place. I spend quite a bit of my time in the radio room here. You do need a license to be able to operate. Um, the museum has its own club station, uh, Mike Mike Zero, Mike Oscar Charlie, um, which we operate most days that we're in here. I first uh, was involved because a workmate of mine um, asked me to come along and I got involved and my background and interest in communications of all sorts um, so there was a match between what I felt I could do and what the museum needed and you'll see from the radio room here we have a number of older equipments that still operate the museum at the moment is uh, based on the First World War. Uh, it's 1916 particularly at the moment we're emphasising. Um, I mean history is quite important because uh, if you don't understand your history and remember it then you're likely to go through all the same routine again including wars so history is quite important and I think a museum like this uh, satisfies that role. I am uh I am visitor from Spain, and it's a very, very, very interesting. And it's uh, I love uh, the I love the history, 
and the first war and the second world war is uh, is uh, is very very interesting for me. Because we're always short of volunteers, but there are all sorts of different things you can volunteer to do. We need everybody from painters and decorators to people who can restore and also write things and show people around exhibitions. So really, basically anything that you can do that's useful, we can use. Well, I started because I, I started coming to the lectures on a Tuesday, the Gaudi lectures, which I found very interesting. And then just one evening, they said they needed volunteers and I thought, why not? I'll give it a go. They're all very friendly and very helpful, which is one of the reasons I, I felt quite, quite happy to volunteer, having never worked in a museum before. To volunteer, you simply contact the museum itself direct, or you can go onto the website and find the email address. Better still, drop in and have a look and see what we do.